Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay, and this is Life with Lindsay. Today, we have a whipping chat. Um, so, actually, let me pull this up while I let you guys know what's going on and what I'm working on. Um, for those who don't know, a whipping chat is WIP, W-I-P. It is a work in progress. So, I will be working on what I'm working on, which is the Eye of the Cat from Lola Rose Diamonds. Uh, she is officially launching her site on uh, May 1st. I uh, will leave all the information down below. Um, so I'll be working on this. You can pull out whatever it is you are working on, whether it be a craft of your own or some project at home, laundry, in the car, at work, anything like that. Um, there is no right way or wrong way to whip and chat. Uh, a few boring housekeeping tips. If you hear a noise directly to my left, I do have a fan running. Uh, the tiny human is sleeping, but my husband is in the room. You will certainly hear husband noises if you haven't already. Say hi, husband. Hello. He's over there sanding away right now, so you may hear sanding. Uh, you may hear heat gun noises, which sounds like a hairdryer. Uh, just general husband noises. You know, he's sitting in a chair 10 feet away from me. So, uh, I don't normally go real into detail of what I'm using, but I'm going to go over this, you guys. This is my latest pen from Lazy River. This is the Carlton sweater, you know, from Fresh Prince. And I'm absolutely in love with it. I am working with a metal four-placer from BFF and an angled tip from Gina over at filament fanatics so oh and trey's bella art day nicole if you guys hear a beeping sound i do use a timer so how is everybody doing i am recording this on a sunday uh perhaps the day before this is going up <sighs> my schedule i say in major air quotes because i don't have an actual schedule um has been all sorts of wonky because i'm actually sitting at the table that I usually use to record projects. But I am testing out working in this space for working on a larger canvas. So if you guys have been here long enough, you've heard me talk about how I don't really have enough room on my actual crafting table to... Uh, where? To uh, record. Okay, I am looking for something desperately that I was looking for a minute ago that I couldn't find a minute ago and yet here I am still not able to find what I need does that happen to anyone else or is that just me so I am going to hope yep okay I was hoping that my nails would be long enough for me to pull the wax out uh hopefully I didn't get a whole bunch in my nail because I normally if you guys have ever used any kind of metal like stainless steel tips, you are not supposed to use a metal device like tweezers or anything like that to get the wax out because you can scratch it and damage it. And I always use, you know, the really cheap uh, pointy plastic tweezers that come when you buy usually like a special drill kit, things like that. I usually use that to scrape out, but I don't know where it went. Anyway, so... I am sitting at the desk that I normally use to record things, and my actual desk is great. It just, because of the location, it doesn't really work very well. I can only work on something that is wide or long. I'm sorry, that isn't both wide and long. So if one side is narrow, it doesn't matter if it's the length or the width, then it works for me. Um, but that doesn't always seem to be the case and here I am testing out this spot and I am enjoying it but the dilemma is then if I want to record unless I'm recording a whip and chat uh, like right now I have to move everything off of this desk so that I can record something else here um, I don't know I'm sure I'm not the only person who is some sort of content creator that when you record one thing, if you have the ability to, you try to take that time and record multiple things. So for me, the plan is Monday, uh, I am expected to get mail from Dreamer Designs and 
I would love to be able to get the new kits unboxed, which would be super cool. And I will have to, rec I, I have something else I'd like to record. So I'm going to just have to see if it works. I usually like to, this, ouch, this is a personal preference because I only work when my kiddo is sleeping or sleeping. So I don't have the luxury, like some people keep theirs out on their kitchen table. And when their kids are busy doing something else, they just pull it out for a little bit. I am on the third floor of our house, and I only come up here and work during her nap time, whether she naps or not, and then after she goes to bed. And I like to personally maximize my time, and if I know I'm not going to be able to do something over her nap time, for example, because I have something else, like this coming Monday we have a phone call with the emotional support person I don't know what you call her for the school district for um, my daughter but because of that I'm probably going to try to take that time afterwards to film but let's just hope that dreamer designs delivers it because it's still showing that it's in Illinois and I don't live in Illinois but it's still saying out for delivery Monday so we shall see but anyway um, that was a whole lot of like rambles and nothing actually really super relevant so um, besides that, I have been saying for a while now, I'm going to be working on my Heaven and Earth, or, little, 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 Heaven and Earth Designs post review. And I kind of hit a little bit of a snag while working on what I want to make sure I cover because it's one of those weird concepts that if I have an issue with the canvas or the drills, that's not Heaven and Earth Designs, that's the company that I went through. If I have an issue with um, the symbols, it's not on the canvas because it's a blank canvas. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way to be helpful, I guess. And there's plastic there. And to make it as well-rounded as I possibly can. So... I am hoping to get that and the, the Dreamer Designs recorded on Monday. So, for all of those who are curious about either of them, keep your eyeballs peeled and make sure that you guys have your notifications set to all for my channel. I had quite a few people recently tell me that they thought my channel was on vacation. They thought I hadn't uploaded in a couple weeks. And I'm just like, no, I don't know why it's not showing up. I don't remember if I talked about this or not, but I have reached out to YouTube. No surprise. They never got back to me. So I would hate for people who actually want to see my content to be missing out on it. So anyway. I will say... Since you had that issue, yeah, I've been getting your alerts a lot more. Oh, like when I know when you said I don't understand, I I couldn't remember getting a lot of your alerts. Now maybe I'm just paying more attention to it. Maybe so. If you guys can hear, my husband was saying he's he's subscribed to my channel like a good supportive husband. Um, but ever since I had that conversation about missing out on a lot of people missing out on my alerts, he said he's noticed them coming through more now. So we'll see. Like you had one this morning, right? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, anyway, so we are... So let's let's chat about the week that just ended. So uh, Monday we had OT, which normally I would have had OT the following week. Um, but our occupational therapist actually needed to switch weeks. Because her son, or I think her son, her child has a college visit and it was going to interfere with our session. So the way it works is every week we have two sessions. We have speech every single week and then we alternate between her itinerant teacher, her head teacher, special education, whatever you want to call it, and OT. It just was coincidental. We had all three this week which, and then next week. Her speech therapist is off because she has appointments with her kiddo 
So we went from three sessions this week to no sessions next week. Um, OT was fine. I, I don't really have anything to report on that front. And then Tuesday, we took her to the last ice skating session of the season. If you guys are new here, my daughter uh, has been taking skating lessons for a couple weeks now. And the very, very first one, she like went out on the ice right away. No hesitation. Absolutely loved it. And since then, it's just been like, hey, you guys are torturing me. I mean, not really. She just... She has to build her confidence back up. She wants to do it. You can see I know, it. I know, I know, I know. Um, I just... The first week we took her to this place, um, it, was, it was a little bit harder because they apparently that day changed the policy that you were allowed to have two parents or a parent and someone else with you at the skating rink. But we didn't know that, and so my husband sat in the car, and of course she screamed from her dad. Which, of course, if he had come in, she would have been like, I want mommy now. So, um, this week, the very first thing they do, uh, they teach these kids about respect, and the first thing they have to do is ask for their skates. So, she walks around the house, and she's like, skate size 7. And I'm like, yeah, skate size 7. That's exactly right, kiddo. And then they have to do three laps around, um, like, some stanchions. Is that what they're called? Yeah. And um, then once they do that, and it's, like, on the mats. And it's to, to help them with balance and um, things like that. Then they have to ask for permission to go on the ice. And she did all of that, and she was a champ. And then there's, like, this little vestibule, if you will, between the area where you're getting your skates and you're getting your skates on and then the actual rink. So you go in these doors and then you can go to the left or the right and, and sit in the stadium stairs or seats. And then directly in front of you is the ice rink. It's once we hit those doors in there that she doesn't, she doesn't want to go on the ice. Um, and they don't want people hanging out in that middle section because, uh, well, COVID for one, but also because they want you to be sitting in the stands and not, um, you know, yelling towards your kid in the rink. So the way these lessons work is the first and the last 15 minutes are, you know, free skate. And then the middle 30 minutes are a lesson. And now it's kind of split into two groups in the lesson because you have some kids that have been taking lessons for uh, years and then you have other kids who just, they're good. They don't, they don't need that much extra assistance. And then you have, I think she said there's three other kids um, that just need a little bit extra help because they're newer. Uh, and then my daughter would be the fourth one. It's either three or four. And, you know, they can't do anything if the kids won't get on the ice. So I'm sitting there watching as my kid is having another temper tantrum because she doesn't want to go on the ice even though I know this is something she wants to do and she even continues to express that this is something she wants to do so just like the previous week towards the end of the lesson the instructor said that she just kind of like grabbed her and put her in the middle of the ice and this is this is not like a harsh thing um and that point Briar was starting to scream that she wanted daddy and so the instructor said then go get your father. Go get him. And it's basically like you drop him off in the pool and you go swim. So um, I wonder if part of the reason that she is not enjoying this as much as she did that first time is she keeps spending a lot of time on the ice. And I think she's getting like cold and wet. So I bought her these. They look like the super puffy coats. But they're snow pants. And they're just... Like, over the, the hips, they're not, um, like, bib snow pants. So, I'm hoping that that will help her stay a little bit dry and warm. Although, the one thing it does say is, like, don't dress your kids in snow gear. Because I think it's too bulky. But I kind of put her through the test today. And I was like, jump! And she's, like, jumping all over the place. I'm like, twirl! And she's running around. She's doing somersaults on the floor. She's standing up, sitting down. It's not slowing her down. So, I was like, alright, let's try these out. Um, the other slight issue that we run into is our daughter was not built for pants she's super super skinny with like the world's tiniest waist 
and she's tall. So, um, the pants that she wore to her last session, for example, I had to put her in knee high socks to cover the fact that her pants only went to like a couple inches above her ankle. <laughs> so, um, I don't want to go buy her an entire wardrobe. Especially because she's going to be ice skating in the summer soon. But, um, if you guys hear that, that is my husband's heat gun. And, uh, or Dremel or whatever's going. But, uh, so yeah, I got that. She's So she's really excited. So, Tuesday after the lesson was over, and they basically forced her. She was standing up on the ice on her own. She was starting to take little steps again. And then when she came off the ice, she just took one look at us. And she's like... I'm so proud of me. And I was like, see, this is what kills me. You're so miserable in the moment. But as soon as it's done, you're so proud of yourself. And of course, we're proud of her. But it's hard to watch as you know your kid wants to do something. And they just refuse to do it. And they, you know. Also, I, every other parent that's in there has been through like a phase where their kid was kicking and screaming in a public setting. And if you are not a parent, you're going, that's not a normal thing. I hate to tell you it. It's a normal thing. Um, the one woman I was talking to, she kind of, uh, she was trying to get my attention, you know, because you can't really like just go up to a random stranger in the middle of a pandemic and be like, hey, I want to talk to you. I mean, I guess you can. Let me show you something. What? Let me show you something. <laughs> so... She was telling me that she nannies for two little girls. The one little girl was on the ice, um, and she was no fears, no nothing. She said the older one is now nine years old, and for the first five months of lessons, every single time they would come in, all she would do was kick and scream and cry. Every single time for five months. And then she said one day she just got over it and got on the ice. And now at nine years old, she is competing. So, I, you know, I hope it doesn't take us months. months, plural, let alone five months to get there. But the next session starts on Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday. And it is a five-week session. And I have um, signed her up for the whole session Unfortunately, this Tuesday is also my second COVID shot. So uh, we're probably going to have to cut it short or I'm going to have to just play dumb and kind of show up to my lesson a little late. Or my lesson, my shot a little late. We haven't quite figured that out yet, but we'll figure that out. So um, that was Tuesday. And, and she's so funny because like afterwards, all she could talk about in the whole car ride home is how proud she was and that mommy and daddy were proud of her and that she's like, I'm so proud of me. And I'm like, good job, baby girl. And she's like, I did do a good job. She was like beaming. And I'm like, how was this kid 10 minutes ago? Like screaming. <laughs> and now she's like, yay, this is the best thing ever. So I honestly think it's just going to be a few more times, like really like breaking her kind of. Before she uh, gets back up and is like, you know what? I can do this and I want to do this. And um, I'm also hoping that the snow pants situation will help us like in the summer. So that she can go into the ice rink in shorts. And I can just put the pants over her shorts instead of dressing her for cold weather when it's 97 degrees with 100% humidity. But um, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's hope that this summer is not that bad. Um... But, I mean, they were not expensive pants. And, like, the one person's like, they only lasted a couple months. And I'm like, if these last a couple months and they do their job, then I'll be satisfied. You know. So, um, we did that. And then Wednesday, my husband had to get blood work done. Like, the butt crack of dawn. I think he had to be there at, like, 7 o'clock. 7 or 7.30. And then um, his blood work came back great. And then... Um, yeah. Well, let's not talk about that. Um, and then this was Wednesday. So we had speech in person for the second time. Now, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure I talked about this in my last whip and chat. But last week was my kiddo's first in-person speech session. And if you are new here, uh, my daughter receives uh, county-run services for speech, occupational therapy, and... I guess special education. I don't know the easiest way to describe what that is. And because her 
occupational therapist and our head teacher do Zoom from their house, and we are a home-based uh, student, meaning my child is not in daycare or preschool, uh, we are the very last to be added to the schedule, um, and they haven't even approved for it yet, so her speech teacher does her Zooms from her office because her husband uses their house to do his Zooms as a teacher. So I said, what's the difference between you doing your appointments in person in your office and over Zoom in your office? And she's like, you absolutely can request that. So we did. Last week was our first week. And my kiddo is obsessed with her speech therapist. Like, she loves her. She's informed us that Miss Kayla is her best friend. She told us Miss Kayla was her valentine. Like, she just loves Miss Kayla. And she will spend, I would say she probably spends, like, a good couple hours a week just telling us about Miss Kayla. So, last week after her session, she was going on and on and on about Miss Kayla's pink baby. And asking us questions about Miss Kayla's pink baby. Now, mind you, we're not in the room with her when she has these speech sessions. Because they basically gave her, like, I don't know, a supply closet and said, here you go, you can teach from in here. And that's, like, her office is so tiny. And it's fine for a three-year-old, but it's not fine for a three-year-old and then two grown adults. So, we kept telling her, we don't know what you're talking about, baby girl. We weren't in there. We don't know anything about Miss Kayla's pink baby. And Miss ba Miss Kayla's pink baby this, Miss and I like, honest to God, we're like, what the hell is she talking about? So the first thing we said to Kayla this week was, uh, we have a question for you. And she's like, yeah, what's up? I'm like, um, what the hell's up with this pink baby? And she just started laughing. It's this teeny tiny little baby doll. You know, one of those ones that has the floppy body, but the hard plastic head and arms and legs. And they used it to work on transitions. Now, my daughter has a very difficult time transitioning from one thing to another. That's not super uncommon at this age, but she has a very difficult time. And the way they were using the baby doll is that it's time to put the pink baby to bed. And she goes night-night, and you'll see her next time. Okay, that makes sense. And then, of course, she starts talking about Miss Kayla's purple baby. And I'm like, how many babies and does... And, and the fuzzy puppy. And I'm like, how many babies does Miss Kayla have? Who knows? Oh, she has a purple baby. Yeah, so that was interesting to find out. Um, quick water break. But she was funny. So um, she was telling us about like what they worked on. So she got a printed version of the Hungry Hungry Caterpillar. You know, the children's classic that we've all read, even if we don't have kids. Um and it was very cute because they colored it in and it has her name on the front and um, the the page where the caterpillar has already eaten everything. She's like, it's a big fat caterpillar. She just was so excited about it. So um, we, my daughter loves books, loves books. Like there are certain times we have to like put books away or we will literally spend like an hour reading the same book over and over and... I don't know about you guys, and I don't mind reading, but I don't want to read the same thing. Doesn't matter if it's for me or someone else over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, so I was flipping through Instagram, and uh, if you guys don't know what Drag Queen Story Time, Drag Queen Story Hour is, it's a program that. A lot of big cities and some small cities uh, have where drag queens read books to kids. Now, due to COVID, most of this, I mean, I'm sure there are some places that have resumed in person. But in general, this is something that has been shifted to a virtual um, activity, I guess. So there was an ad, not an ad, there was, you know, a story and I was, I was watching it and it was really interesting because... It's the public library system in New York City, I believe. And obviously, you don't need to be in New York City to watch these virtual ones. Now, I have gone to the ones here uh, where I live. And let me tell you, I live in very small town USA. Uh, very, a much more conservative area. So, it was really surprising to me that they, they had Drag Queen Story Hour. 
but I love it. Uh, I've been taking my daughter. She was little the first time I took her. Um, but we've gone quite a few times. Obviously not since the pandemic. But it was this queen who was reading The Hungry Hungry Caterpillar in both English and I want to say it was Cantonese. And I was like, oh, how perfect. So I pulled that up and I streamed that with her and she was in heaven. And then, of course, my husband went upstairs because he knew we had the actual, like, real book of it. Not just the little paper one that she made with her therapist. But she loved it. So now we'll look over and she'll be reading the book, quote unquote, to her, her friends, her toys. And if you're not familiar with how the book goes, it... it He's a hungry caterpillar, and then on this day he ate one thing, this day he ate two things, this day he ate three things, and then he ate four things, and then just one day he ate through all these different things. And so you'll sit there and she'll be like, one piece of chocolate cake, he ate through one piece of Swiss cheese, and one salami, and one this, one pickle, and I'm like, this kid, if you didn't know, you would swear this kid could read, because she just memorized it, and she's as happy as a pig in poop like reading this book to her her toys and it's a funny thing because she is very animated when she does it but um so that was fun and if you guys are interested in more information about uh the drag story time uh you can find them on instagram uh facebook i'll leave the link for the instagram account down below uh, if I ever say that I'm going to leave something down below or in the eye and I forget or the link is broken or whatever, uh, very nicely and kindly just remind me and I will, I will get that adjusted. Um, sometimes I think I got everything done in the editing process and turns out I am not perfect. So, um, but I love it and I love that since it's virtual, we have access to a ton of different stories and a ton of different performers and it's really amazing i remember my husband has a former uh colleague work colleague that he's very very conservative and that's that's fine um but he was like i can't believe that you would let your daughter go to something like that and he's like she's little what's the difference between her having someone in a spider-man costume reading to her or this you know, my daughter has no idea what an act, what it means to be a drag queen. She just sees the over the top, the glitter, you know, all the stuff that people who love drag, this is what they love about them. They love the performance act. And I will tell you, because I had somebody once say to me like, oh my God, isn't that like really adult? No, it, they cater it towards children. It's, they're not expecting, you know, you that you're coming with show. your, with, right. They're not expecting that you're coming to a drag show, throwing dollar bills at them, like, it's it's very much catered towards children and families, and it's it's absolutely wonderful. The books are always books that are um, there's some sort of theme of being unique, loving who you are, things like that. It's there's no uh, gay agenda, which I love when people say that. Like, do you think that there's someone out there with a clipboard just trying to recruit you? Like, is that is that? Is that what the gay agenda is? Or have I just not been, you know, tapped into? Uh, anyway, um, I, we love Drag Story Time. And my daughter was watching, uh, we watch the reels with her sometimes on Instagram, which, you know, against better judgment sometimes. Sometimes we're like, oop, that, nope, let's swipe that. But because I like drag content, I often get recommended more drag content. So, there's this rooftop drag brunch. I don't even know where it is, but it shows up all the time. And she was watching it the other day with me, and there was a queen dressed like Tina Turner performing a, a Tina Turner song. And it's exactly what you would think of with Tina Turner, with the big feathered hair and the dress with the fringe everywhere. And Briar was like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful, mommy. And I was like, isn't she? And that's why I do this. Because my daughter's not looking at this and going, what's wrong with her? Or why is she like that? Or anything like that. She's looking at this and this is part of 
the normalcy and what it means to be a child, to see someone dressed up like as a princess, for example, at a birthday party. You're not going to be all up in arms because they're not a real princess. You know, it's entertainment. Excuse me. And it, it gives an opportunity for my daughter to be exposed to things that she's not exposed to in our house because... Uh, I don't dress in drag. <laughs> well, I was going to say because, you know, we're... There's no gay people or, or you know, there's no LGBTQ party happening in my house. Uh, if you guys are unaware, I am and have always been a huge ally to the LGBTQ plus TIA, ooh, sorry, community. Um, I'm always wearing my rainbow bracelet. Although this one desperately, like, if you guys can see it, it is so misshapen and this one says love wins um one of my favorite minders is my my love wins rainbow heart i um i don't know if i've discussed this on the channel or not but when i got pregnant with my daughter this was after many many years of trying and i was actually i had gone back to school in my 30s and i was set to go to school for my bachelor's in the fall when I found out I was pregnant and, like, I was due, like, right around finals. And I was like, well, that seems like a miserable idea. So I put that on hold. My dream job would be to work with LGBTQ plus youth uh, in, like, a community center or something like that. Help connect them to the services they need. Because not every child in this world is going to have the support of their parents. Even though, as a parent, it is your job to love your child unconditionally. And um, if this is something that you don't agree with, uh, then I'm going to just recommend that perhaps I'm not the channel for you. Because I am a huge, huge proponent and advocate of what I'm talking about. And uh, I've talked about this on Instagram Many, many times, which if you don't follow me on Instagram, uh, all my information is always linked down below in the description box. I also do have a Facebook group, but it is my job as my child's parent to love her for who she is, no matter what. Now, obviously, if my kid becomes a serial killer, like, maybe my thoughts would be a little bit different, but I'm not talking about that. Because, um, you know, there's always that one person that's like, yeah, but what if? Like, here's the thing. You can have hopes and dreams for your child. You can have expectations for your child. But it is your child's life. It is not your life. So it is your job to properly educate them and to love them and nurture them and help them succeed. Uh, if you have someone, particularly a child... That comes out to you. Your immediate instinct shouldn't be shame or, oh my God, why? Or, I didn't raise you that way. Your immediate reaction should be, thank you for being brave enough to share your authentic self with me. And I am here to love and support you no matter what. And that's it. It doesn't matter what your child's reasoning is for coming out. If that's the case, that's how you should be handling it as a parent. And I'm not saying this as a, like, uh, you should be doing following all of my instructions on parenting. But I'm saying that as an ally who does have uh, queer family members, uh, I know what it's like. To watch them go through that process and to know that they always have someone in their corner no matter what. And that is certainly not the case with a lot of families. And I totally just went on a tangent I wasn't expecting to go on. Um, I have lots and lots of thoughts. Like, don't ever, don't ever get me started on gendering of toys because... <sighs> That's that's my that's my soap. 
But all the genitalia require my penis. To yeah, if your child requires their genitalia to operate a, a, a toy, then it's not a kid's toy. Like, let's just put it at that. Uh, that's a conversation for another day because that is... I would say that's definitely my soapbox issue. That's the one I will always stand up and fight for. Uh, and oftentimes I'm alone in the way I am expressing things. And that's totally fine. Because if I need to be on an island, I know how to swim. So that was Wednesday. I don't think we did anything Thursday. Although my daughter did tell us... Um, which, if you didn't know, my daughter is speech delayed. She's definitely catching up, but there's moments where uh, she really, like, we still have no idea what she's saying. She's also now discovered this baby voice, which when she does it, it's very whiny. It's super cute, but I have no, I can't understand it. And um, she does it because she has this tiny little mini that she calls Baby Minnie, and Baby Minnie's a troublemaker, FYI. So everyone watch out for her. But, um... She does it a lot now, and I'm like, baby girl, we don't know, we can't understand you. You have to use your big girl voice. Voice. She's very much in that phase right now where I'm not a baby, I a big girl. And it's like, well, if you're a big girl, then use your big girl voice, because I don't know what you're saying. Um, but she said that she wanted to do something cool and exciting. And we're like, okay, well, what do you find cool and exciting again my kid's three so you know playing in dirt is cool and exciting to her so I wasn't sure where we were gonna go with this and she's like I want to do arts and crafts and my husband and I just looked at each other we're like what okay let's do arts and crafts um and that's the first time uh, maybe ever that I can honestly remember her truly conveying this is what I want can we do it please um, so, I don't even remember what we did, but she, Played in sand. oh, that I guess was our fun, cool, and exciting, uh, thing. So, I am one of those people who, I'm all for the sensory bins and the sand and all that stuff. What I'm not for is doing it inside my house. So, sand is an outdoor play. Rice bins are outdoor play so uh my rice we need to make a new batch of that but she has some uh kinetic sand outside <clears throat> excuse me and she loves that and then uh i think we did sand and chalk and that's when heather came over yes so i stop ruining my whipping chat <laughs> well, I was so i was just trying to help if you guys would like a whip and chat from Data Monster, let us know down below. Um, and we were out there playing. And if you guys know Heather, who is otherwise known as Diamonds on Kirby on Instagram, uh, Heather and I have been friends now for about a year. And we both live in the same state. We don't live super near each other. But she has come to town a few times because uh, both of her children are athletic and uh, her son is going to school in the fall somewhat near me. So they came to town for a, a cheer competition for her daughter and so her son could go visit the college that he's attending in the fall. So they came over and Heather, it was Heather, her two kids, and her husband and it was absolutely a joy uh, they brought gifts, which was super thoughtful and totally unnecessary. But if you guys know me and my love of all things cactus, well, Heather went all out on all things cactus, including, and I will throw up the picture here, but it was a cactus, a sloth cactus, um, and then some light up cactus flamingo necklaces that my daughter like like the christmas light necklaces my daughter has now pulled all of the charms off of hers i will not let her see that i have my own somewhere else away from her because i don't need her to ruin those as well um and she's all proud of herself because she can turn it on and off but she likes to leave it on so i said don't don't be mad when it won't turn back on you know batteries but uh it was so nice. It, she made some homemade wine and brought that and put it in a cooler bag that was shaped like a pineapple. And then uh, 
which is so funny because she had just recently gifted me a neon cactus light, which I don't think I've shared that on, on social media yet. I have to figure out a better spot for it when I'm back at my actual desk because like right now it doesn't do me any good on, the, on my recording table. So I have it across the room over there. But it was so incredibly nice. Uh, my husband had a really good day sales-wise. And if you guys don't know my husband, he is the data monster. Um, all of his information is always listed down below. But he customizes Funko Pops. He had a really great day. So um, we spent the time with Heather and her family. They just hung out in my yard. And her kiddos played with my daughter and they had gotten some books for her as well. So um, Heather's kids were reading to her and she was picking dandelions and just, you know, doing typical stuff three-year-olds do. And then we went and picked up some dinner and we went over to this bakery um, and just picked up some sweet treats to, to bring home and eat later. And it was a lot of fun and it was super, super nice. Like, I wish I could meet... So many of my diamond painting friends, but it's not, I mean, travel in general is not feasible right now, but you know, I, there's not a lot of people that are, that I am aware of that are local to me that, that do this craft. I'm sure there are people who do, and I just don't know them, but, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm also not saying I'm like the mayor of my town. Like, I don't know everyone, um, but. Mayor McCheese, man. <laughs> Does that still exist? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's McDonald's, right? Yeah, McCheese. Don't mind me. So, anyway, that was super, super nice. And if you guys follow Heather, she put up the photo of the two of us masked up in my driveway. It was so funny. At one point, she was, like, telling her husband, she's like, just turn off the car. <laughs> it was so sweet. And I uh, have enjoyed... The one bottle of wine she gave us. So, Heather, thank you so much. Um, it's, it's the kindness and the generosity that I have found in this community. Just, it, it always blows my mind. Always. I mean, I struggle with gift giving. I never thought I was a bad gift giver. Until I got older and then I realized like unless you tell me exactly what it is you want everything that I think is a great idea it turns out to never be a great idea like the best story is this was years ago years ago my husband and I were dating we weren't even married and um I had gotten him this induction charger now nowadays if you buy any new smartphone like every one of them works on an induction charger but back then you needed to buy the ones that had the right tips that would work with your charger and your phone and your device, whatever it was. So I bought this. It was very expensive. And I was uh, assured it would work for his devices. I got it. Gave it to him. First thing I did was... Uh, we turned it on. Sorry, I'm trying to get my, my colors back in order. And it didn't work. The only thing it worked for in our house was my DS. And I'm like, so I just paid all this money to induction charge my my Game Boy, basically. If you guys don't know what induction chargers are, you literally lay your device on top of it and it charges it. But... This one worked with, like, power bricks. Yeah, it was... It was great in concept. It just, in execution, it did not work. And, of course, my husband was like, oh, it's great. And I'm like... Yeah, it is great, but it's not great that anyone can't use it. Like, nobody could use... Ugh, it was horrible. So, um, I'm trying to step up my, my gift-giving game. So, um, yeah. That's all I'm going to say about that because people watch this channel. I don't need certain people to say certain things. That sounds really, like, ominous. It's not. What did you do? If I told you, it's true. I know. The whole world would know. I know. Let's just say I'm shipping out some things tomorrow, and that's it. That's all I'm going to say. Stop trying to convince me to tell people what I'm talking about. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that was Friday, and then in the evening, 
It was funny because uh, Heather was here when this happened. And I don't know if she took notice and I never even asked her that I was constantly checking my phone. And it wasn't because I was being an asshole. Uh, there's a shop. It's now called Sweet Ann Maid. It used to be called Finna. And this is a woman who hand makes dolls. Like plush dolls. And her stuff is absolutely incredible. And like to put it into perspective, her customs for 2021 are completely booked through. I am on the waiting list. I got in last year uh, before she filled up, thankfully. And um, I'm super excited for that. I don't, I don't know when my turn is. But she has these small drops. And I was like, I need to get... This was a rainbow drop. I was like, I have three choices. I want the one that looks like Rainbow Bright. I want the big girl... <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to take a sip of my water real quick. The big girl, which is a 21 inch doll with uh, the gray hair, or one of the little girl, which is, I forget how big the small ones are, 12, 15, 12 inches. I don't know. Um, and they have, this one had the rainbow hair and I was like, that's what I want. So turns out I missed all of them. Every single one of them. If you guys know how fast things go for like Lazy River or, you know, any of those shops where... Like, you have to check in and check out the minute that the site goes live or you will not get what you want. It's same thing with her. Uh, but thankfully, somebody else snagged it uh, knowing that I really wanted it and not in a malicious way. In a, if you got one for yourself, great. If you didn't, I got one for you. And I was blown away. So, um, she will be... Isn't that the second time they've done that? Yes, but I never said the first one. The owner of the shop doesn't know this, so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you know. But uh, right. she's, yeah, I, I said to her, I go, do you want me to pay you, like, a brokerage fee? Because clearly you've become my doll dealer. Uh, so, I have a daddy doll I got made of my husband last year, uh, probably a year ago now. Yes, and it... It is spot on. It has his long hair. It has his facial hair. It has his glasses, his tattoos. It has the khaki cargo shorts and the black t-shirt. Which, if you see my husband wearing a black t-shirt in, like, literally everything, just mind your business. Because <laughs> he owns more than one shirt. He just always wears black shirt. Um... And it's funny because I had somebody say to me one time, they're like, doesn't your husband ever? And I'm like, it's not the same shirt. It's a different black shirt. Like he's got packs of black shirts um, because he's not working in an office setting. He doesn't need to be wearing button downs. So he just wears the black shirts. Anyway, not the point. So um, the funniest thing is like when we first got it for her, Briar was uh, taken aback by it a little bit. I think she was just a little like creeped out by it. And she's definitely warmed up to it. And today she spent like half hour in the pod playing with it. But the first thing she says every single time, every single time, Daddy Doll has tattoos. And if I can find the picture, I'll throw it up here. If not, um, I do have it on my Instagram. But it, the owner, her name's Chelsea, she hand embroidered all of my husband's tattoos onto this doll. Every single one of them. Um, and... If you can figure, you know, that doesn't give you a whole lot of, like, wiggle room to put tattoos. And that'd be fine if it was, like, one or two tattoos. But my husband basically has a sleeve on one arm with no filler. And then the other arm has a handful of tattoos. He's got some on his back, on his legs. Uh, so he's got a lot of tattoos. And she nailed it. She did a great job and that's that's why her stuff can't stay in stock because it it just people want it they don't care how much it costs they just want it and um i'm hoping that she brings the rainbow ones back again because they were fantastic fantastic so that was friday um saturday we didn't really do anything we just kind of lounged at home and i love when like the grandparents would be like well, what did you do today? And it's like, well, sometimes we don't do anything. But uh, my mother-in-law, I love her dearly. She's one of those people that she'll say something and like ruin, um, ruin the moment or bring up 
the emotions that my kid, like, she'll be like, oh, did you go get dessert today? And I'll be like, no. And she'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. And then my daughter, of course, all, what does she want? Can we go get dessert? She doesn't do it maliciously. And it's, I, it's not like I'm, I'm mad about it, but it's definitely one of those things that there's so many times that I'm just like, no, she's just trying to find talking. I know. And, and the difference between my mother and my husband's mother is my mother could sit there in complete silence and just listen to my daughter play and hope that I'll translate for her. Whereas my mother-in-law is constantly wanting to have a conversation with her. But at the end of the day, no matter what, my kid's three. So like, you know, she'll talk to her grandparents for a few minutes and then she just wants to run off and play, which come on, if you were three or 33, you'd probably want to do the same thing. By the way, my husband and I, neither one of us are 33, so I don't know why I just used that number, but, um, what? That's true. You old fart. So that was yesterday. And then today is Sunday. So my husband, um, was out of the house today. He went to get some sports memorabilia stuff. And anyway, so he was out of the house and I was here and, you know, he was very adamant, you know, be good for mommy. And she's like, okay. Now, if you have a child and it's a two-parent household, I'm sure you find that when it's you and your spouse or your partner or whoever, that the kid or kids behave one way versus when it's just you and that person. And she was a doll today. I, she had a few moments where, like, she kept trying to, like, wind up to hit me. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, put your arm down. We're not throwing baseballs. Like, calm down. Um... Which she'd love if we threw baseballs, but not the point. So she um, had a really good day with me. And I was looking at, you know, social media always like, here's what happened a year ago on this day. Look at your memories. <laughs> so I was looking at a video of mine from my Snapchat. And it was a video of her running down the street, pushing her Minnie Mouse in a doll stroller. Now, this doll stroller, I'm going to tell a brief backstory here. I got it last year. Um, I got it pre-pandemic, but it was a nightmare. I went to Walmart with my kid three times and every time it said it was in stock, finally I flagged down an employee and they told me that not only was it not in stock, but they didn't know if and when they were getting any more shipments of it. And I was like, look, I can't keep coming in here under like telling my kid, okay, we're going to get this today and then not having it. Now, it's not Walmart's fault that my daughter got her hopes up high, but it is Walmart's fault that it says they have 17 on the website and they... They have zero in stock. Um, I mean, it's Walmart, so that's neither here nor there. So she sees this video, and she was like, I I want a doll stroller. Now, you're thinking to yourself, but Lindsay, you just told us about when you got the doll stroller. I did. I sure did. And that doll stroller, it lived a pretty good life. But I have a child who didn't quite comprehend the fact that even though... You can fit in it. Doesn't mean you can sit in it. And we kept telling her over and over and over again, this is just for your dolls, baby girl. It is not for you. And eventually she sat in it one too many times. The fabric tore and the metal buckled because, again, it is a doll stroller. So after my husband came home and after her nap and all this stuff, we had a conversation and I said, all right, you've been a really good kid today. Because I had told her we would get her a new one. And I also told her it wasn't going to be today. And all she wanted was to get it. So we went to Walmart. And um, this is the first time I've been to Walmart in 14 months. And I'm guessing it's going to be the last time I go to Walmart for another 14 months. It was a disaster. Let me tell you. There were at least a dozen, if not more, people with no masks. And if this is something that you have something negative to say, you can keep that to yourself because um, I've, I've said it here before, you know, nothing that you say is going to change how I feel about this. 
And even if my husband and myself and everyone we know around us is vaccinated, my, st my daughter is still being left susceptible and she has an airway disorder. So I'm going to do everything in my power as her parent to protect her. And she's not old enough for a vaccine. So that means that hoping the people around her are grown up enough to behave like grown ups out in public. And that's all I'm going to say on the attitude of that. So there were at least a dozen people with zero mask on. I would say 95% of the people that were in the Walmart, including its employees, had either their nose and or their chin hanging out. So that was awesome. And I was over, we were at the checkout and my daughter, like you would expect any kid her age, she does okay in a mask, but not great. And at one point, um... We had to remind her that you had to pull your nose back up. It had to cover your nose. Excuse me. Which she did. But at one point, I very, very loudly said, I'm so proud of you, baby girl. You're wearing your mask better than most adults do. And I didn't care who heard me because I said it loud on purpose. And every person that walked by without a mask, I gave them, you know crazy eyes if I could. It sucks when you're wearing a mask that you can't like convey the emotions you want to because half of your face is covered if not more depending on the kind of mask you're wearing but um I know one guy definitely got it because he tried to give it right back to me and I wanted to be like what but um I'm also not trying to get you know like beat up in a Walmart but uh so we got that we got the doll stroller which she then asked if we could take Daisy for a walk outside on the sidewalk as opposed to in the street, I guess. I don't know. But I was like, yeah. So um, we, I said we have to have dinner first and then we can do this. And we did. But while we were there at Walmart, we had to pick up a few like boring things like more shampoo and conditioner. And I wanted to... I think I've mentioned that I'm trying to make my black thumb a little bit greener. I have a couple succulents and a couple air plants, and I'm desperately working to keep them all alive. I'm going to be honest with you. Most of my air plants are crispy and um, not looking too good, but I just keep watering them and putting them back in the, the, <laughs> the holders. I don't know when I can tell myself, it's okay, Lindsay, you can let them go. Um, honestly, I think there's, like, one that's really going and one that's, like, kind of there and the rest are just crunchy. Anyway, so I had told my daughter that I wanted to get some terracotta plants, planters, and that we could decorate them. And she thought this was a great idea. For some reason, she's been seeing a lot of things either on her, she gets one episode of Mickey a day on her one episode of Mickey or like on the reels or whatever. She's been seeing a lot of painting recently and she seems really into it. Again, I don't like doing messy things inside my house and it's not because like, I don't want to clean my house, but I don't want to have to clean my kid and then clean my house from the mess my kid made. Like I'd rather just do one or the other and I'm not very good at either. So I try to eliminate that by only doing messy things outside, which if you're wondering, yes, it does suck when it's winter. So we go over to the aisle and if you've ever used the Walmart app, it's actually really great because it tells you exactly what aisle everything is in. But the problem is it can tell you there's a whole bunch of something in stock and there's nothing. So I went over to where it said that these terracotta planters were and there were uh, like the dishes and a handful of them and that's it. I was like, cool. So we found these other ceramic pots that I think, don't quote me, but I think we should be okay using them to paint. Um, I only picked up two to experiment. Uh, and I told my kid, you can pick any of the two. There's four color options. I said, you could pick two. And of course she said pink for the first one because most days her favorite color is pink. Sometimes it's red. Uh, the one day it was orange, but that's just the life of being three, I guess. So, 
we got two of these pink planters. Um, my hopes was that if we went to Walmart and they didn't have the stroller, that at least we could find some other kind of project that would keep her mind off the fact that she isn't getting the one thing she wants to come to the store for. Because she does obsess and harp over things um, to the point that it like is detrimental to her. So... Um, thankfully for us, they, they did have the stroller, but, so we got the planners, we got some paint for it, and then we, we got a couple boring housekeeping things in the house, like soap, and I got a new laundry basket, and, um, a, like a Tupperware container to help her store some of her toys, you know, like I said, nothing exciting, just some boring stuff, but... I also got her a, a pack of canvases so that she can paint. I thought about it. I don't have an easel, which I guess I probably should if I was going to do projects like that. But it's okay. She's three. She doesn't need to be that fancy. But, um, so she ended up having a really nice night and a really, really lovely week. And I'm, I'm happy with how this week went overall. I mean, we definitely had moments where it's like, ugh. my kid, if she doesn't nap, is like, a total disaster. But then there's some days where she finally does nap and she's still a disaster. And today was one of those days she ate two whole slices of Pizza Hut pizza, uh, one and a half breadsticks, some fruit. I was like, wow, all right, this kid's eating. So, um, so next week, like I said, my hopes are to film that Heaven and Earth Designs video on Monday, the Dreamer Designs video on Monday. Um, I think there was something else I had written. Oh, the, uh, the new Diamond Art Club from the weekend release. I picked up the, um, the Poe one with the, for the Raven. If that's here, I'll probably do an unboxing on that as well. And then the Butterflies with Diamonds event begins on the 28th of April. So if you are watching this in the future, the event runs from April 28th to June 20th, 2021. So if it is any time in that period, you are welcome to start. Check out Bella Art Day Nicole and Lindsay Simmons over on Facebook or Instagram for more information on that. I will try to leave that down below as well. But that is all I got for you guys here. Um, we are now over the hour mark. I did finish the section that I'm working on. I'm going to turn the light pad off so you guys can see it. Uh, I am, I did flip my canvas. I don't have that much more to go. Uh, will I finish this before the event? I'm not sure. I thought I was going to, but then I had two really short days of working. Um, either way, I'm going to finish this before I start that event. So keep your eyes out for some whipping chats for that canvas. If you would like to see my event roundup video, I will leave that in the eye and I will link that down below. One or the other, maybe both. I don't know. I'm rambling much more than normal. So that is all I got for you guys for this one. If you guys enjoyed this content or uh, and want to see more content like this or even content nothing like this, please make sure to give this video two thumbs up. One real life, one virtual. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Come join the Sparkle Squad. And while you are there, make sure you hit that notification bell. Hey. Because I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time and I record while she is sleeping or sleeping. Um, so I do the best with what I have and I hope that it is good enough for everyone else. Um, check me out next Sunday on um, Rebecca over on uh, the That Journey Chick, Crafting Journey, on her YouTube. I will be joining her and going live. So with that being said, I'm going to get out of here and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys! <laughs>